Hey guys, welcome back to another Urban Legend 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a main menu and the links to different options, menus, and credits, and all of those buttons, and adding the main functionalities in the main menu today. And in future videos, I'll show you how to set up the options so you can change the screen resolution, the graphic settings, lighting, all of this, and volume and stuff. So again, that'll be in a future tutorial, but today we're doing the main part of the main menu. So let's get right into it. And what we're going to do first is an optional part, which is create a new level. So I prefer to do this as it helps with performance and helps keep things organized. Again, you don't have to. So you go to file, new level, and then you do empty level. And we're just going to do file, save current as, and I'm going to call this main menu level, like so and then save this into your maps or wherever you want so I'm just going to create a new folder call it levels and just put that in there so save and then to actually get started with this I'm going to create another new folder call this main menu and then I'm going to right click create user interface and create widget blueprint I'm going to call this main menu widget and then we'll just open this up straight away and then what I'm going to do is just have an image. So search for image, drag that in to have this as the background. So I'll set the position X and Y as 0 and 0. And then the size X to 1920, and size Y 1080. And I'll set the anchor to the whole screen like this. And then you can set this as any image you want for the background. You don't need to do this either. Um, but I'm just going to set it as an image. So, so I'll set it to an image that I made that I have from a different game that, I've, that I'm working on. So if I just import this, so I'm just importing it now. And again, this is from a game that I'm working on and this is original background from a couple of years ago. So I've just kept it as kind of nostalgia type thing. So if I just select this and then go back into the blueprint, uh, the widget, sorry. And then over here, once you have the image selected, you go under brush and then where it says image here, you're gonna select it, but as I already have it selected, just press this arrow here. And now we have that set up, so we the, the image is now there. So if we compile this, and then if we just close this, go to the blueprints, and then open level blueprint, and then off event begin play, if we just create widget, and then put in the main menu widget that we just created, and off return value just add to viewport, like so. This means that when the level starts, it should open up our main menu. So there you go, we have the main menu here. As you can see, we don't have a cursor, and we can't really interact with anything if we had buttons there but we'll get into that in a minute. So let's just open up our main menu again. And now we're gonna start creating some buttons. So obviously search for button there. I'm just gonna put that in. And I want to, and I like to keep things organized. So I'm gonna name this one start button like this. I'm just gonna scale it up a bit like there, like that and anchor it to the center of the screen like this. And if I just zoom in and use the arrows to just get this perfectly centered like that. There we go. And then I'm also going to put some text in there. So you can just drag that into the middle of it so it stays organized. I'm going to call this start text. And in the text there, I will just put start or play or anything along those lines. I'm going to change the color to a nice black. And then I might also change the font as well. So obviously I haven't got any imported, but if you do, then you can use them there. So I'll just set it to that one. And I'll increase the size a bit like so. And you can just mess about with all these settings that you want just to get the perfect text. But this is basically the main part. And as we've put it on the button, which means if we move the button, we're now moving the text as well. So then if we duplicate this, so copy it, and then and over here in the hierarchy, because that canvas panel and then paste like that, we now have another button, which will have the exact same settings. And again, you can change the color of the buttons as well. So you can change just the basic colors and also on normal and hovered and pressed. So if you're normal, you want it white on hovered, you want it kind of grayish. And then when you press the button, it's let's say a bit of a darker gray, almost black. So that way you can kind of tell when you're not interacting with the button, when you hover over the button and when you actually press the button. It's just a bit more visual representation. So let's just delete that and duplicate it again. Like so, make sure it's all lined up. Perfect. And then again, we'll change the names. So this isn't start button. This will be options. So call options. And then where it says start, I'll change that to options on the text as well, like that. And then we'll just do this again. So copy and paste. And you do this for as many buttons as you want on your main menu. And on my main menu, I'm gonna have a start options and credits button and also quit as well. So if I just change 
all of these to how I want like that. So now I have credits and then do the same one final time for the quit button. And again, customize this however you want. I'm just doing a basic one like this, but you can just get really creative with this, make it look really nice. But again, I'm just doing the basic kind of things just to start with the main menu. And you can put these in a horizontal box as well, or a vertical, vertical box, sorry, to keep them nice and organized. But I prefer doing it this way because you have kind of more freedom of moving them about and organizing them and stuff like that. So now if we get into the actual functionalities of it, we'll start with the start button. So if we select it and scroll all the way down here and click the unclicked event, there's so now unclicked start button. What we're going to do is simply just open level like this. And for the level name, you're going to want to set this to the name of the level that you have in your game. So if we find it, what it's called, it should be third person example map, but if we actually find what it's called, so third person BP maps, it is third person example map. If I just go to rename it, so I'm copy that so, it's the, so I know it's the exact same. And then just open this up again in level name, third person example map, meaning that it will then open that level that we want. So obviously choose this for the name of the level that you have. And that is that part done. It's very simple. And then we'll do quit as that is also extremely simple. So again, select it, go down to unclicked. And then we come off of this and we simply just type quit game. And that is it. It's as simple as that. And so obviously that will just close the game. So going back to designer and then options and credits, we're going to open up a separate, a separate widget for that. So the credits I'll do in this video as it's very short, but the options I'll leave for another video as you can get into quite a lot of detail with that. So on, on credits, we're just going to get the on clicked event. We're not going to do anything with it at the moment. We get it ready and if we just minimize this go back into the folder and create a new widget so right click user interface widget blueprint and call this credits widget now you can do this all in the same widget by just simply hiding and showing different parts but i prefer doing it like this as it's a lot more organized and a lot easier to see so you could just simply hide hide these and then show the credits or the options or anything like I say, I prefer this way as it just looks a lot cleaner and it's easier to organize and stuff like that. So I'm simply just going to do the same image thing. So 0, 0, 19, 20, 1080 and anchor to the middle, set the image as the picture I imported like that. And then I'm just going to put some text in. Now you can make this in Photoshop and just import the image, but I'm just going to do this credits. So then I just do, I'll just simply write game made by Matt Asplund using Unreal Engine 4, like that. So again, type whatever you want, however you want it, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to center it to the middle like that, and then just make it a bit bigger and as well. Size to content, so it just stays like this, and then I'll keep it white, it won't change the font or anything like that. I'm not going to mess about with how it looks too much but if I then just make it a bit bigger as well so that's under font and then just increase the size like this and again obviously anchor it to the middle of the screen like so. So now we have the credits set up we're just going to compile this and then go back to our main menu widget and to the graph so we've got on click credits button what we're going to do is remove from parent which essentially just gets rid of the main menu widget off of the screen and then what we're going to do is create another widget so create widget and this one is going to be the options menu. So, uh, sorry, credits. So if we just search for credits widget, and then again, just simply add to viewport like this and compile, that would then work. And then go back to the credits. We also want to make a back button so we can go back to the main menu. So if we simply just get a button in down there, call it back button, and then put some text on there again, back text. You don't need to name all these, but like I said, I just like to keep things organized so I know what's what very quickly and just type in the text back and then I'm going to change this just so it's all the same and then change the color to nice black so we can see it again. I think that size works quite well and then I'll just anchor the button to the bottom left of the screen and then again with the button selected scroll down to the on clicked event and then what we're going to do is the same as we did for the main menu so we're going to remove from parent which takes the credits menu off of the screen and then create widget like so, which will then add the main menu back on. So if we select main menu widget and add to viewport like this, like compile and that should now work. So if we play this, we'll see that it doesn't quite work. So we have all these, we hover over it, it's that gray, if we click it, it goes black and you can see that will open this level. 
But the reason why it wouldn't work too well is because if we click somewhere else, we now don't have a mouse cursor, so we, we then can't interact with it at all. So what we need to do is actually be able to keep the mouse cursor on screen at all times, so we can then use it. So to do that, what we need to do is what we need to do is create a new game mode for our main menu. So if we just find the default third person game mode, uh, or the game mode that you use in your game anyway, so mine will be third person BP and blueprints, and it's third person game mode. So if I just duplicate that, so copy, go back to my main menu, and then paste. I'm just going to rename this to main menu game mode, and then in the world settings, so That'll be over on the right, but if you don't have that, you go to Window and then World Settings here. So that you go to World Settings and the Game Mode Override, we're going to set to our Main Menu Game Mode that we've just created. So Main Menu Game Mode there, and then you open select the Game Mode underneath that, and you can keep the default pawn class to anything you want, so your character, and then leave the HUD class as None, or if it's HUD by default, leave it as HUD. And then what we need to do is create a new player controller. So by default, it will just be player controller but we need to create a new one for our main menu where we can constantly show the mouse cursor at all times. So if we just simply right click, go to blueprint class and then open up all classes down here and search for player controller, there it is, we just get player controller there and then select and I'm going to call this main menu underscore PC for player controller and then we just open that up and then what we need to do is find the mouse interface so here it is here and then we just simply tick show mouse cursor there hit compile, minimize this, and then here where it says player controller, if we just change this to our main menu PC that we just made, and if we just save all this, so control shift S to save all, this should work. So now if we hit play, we can see that we have our main menu. If we click, we still have our mouse, and we, when we hover over things, they are gray. If we click on them, it will go black. So if we hit quit, that will close the game. And if we cre hit credits, it takes us to our credits menu, so game made by Matt Aspen using Unreal Religion 4. And then if we hit back, that will go back to the main menu. So if we hit start as well, we are now in our game. And if you click on the screen again, the mouse cursor will disappear as it goes back to the normal player controller. So if we just test this again, hit play, hit start, we're in the game. And everything works perfectly. Hit play, go to options. It hasn't done anything yet as we are setting, up, setting that up in the next video. Hit credits we can see our credits and if we hit back it goes back to the main menu and then if we hit quit it closes the game so as that all works perfectly fine and we've done everything we wanted to do I think that'll be it for this video hey guys I was just editing the video and remembered that I actually need to say something else so when you play your game by default so when you launch your game it will just open up your main level again rather than your main menu so if you want to be able to change it so it loads up the main menu straight away in this level what you're going to do is go to edit project settings and then go down to maps and modes and the editor starter map you'll probably want to leave as your main level but the game default map you're going to want to change to your main menu level so when someone plays your game it will start in the main menu so this should now fix that issue if anyone was having that so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like subscribe down below so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one